about that. Is that but yeah, there's a little bit of audio. Good morning everybody. Always good to check and make sure these things are working. So you don't get through a whole show saying some great stuff that nobody gets to hear. How y'all doing this morning? My name is Tom Rigsby. This is seven minutes in the morning where we get together every morning and chit chat about stuff. And uh, as you can see there in my new lower third, we talk about leveraging talents and gifts to find and do work that matters. Which reminds me, if you're not already a member of the Work That Matters group on Facebook, you should go check that out also. I'll put a link to that um, down in the comments somewhere after I'm done here this morning. If you are listening on your podcast catcher, that's awesome. Thank you for being here. Just want to let you know we do the show live every morning, 7 o'clock Central Time on Facebook. You can watch us and participate, ask questions, leave comments. That would be awesome. Uh, just join me, TomRigsby.com slash Facebook takes you to the right place uh, to be able to catch up with that. Like and follow the page and you'll get a notification. If you're watching live, did you know you can get this on your podcast catcher? See? It's just everywhere, all over the place. When you get here, whether you're watching live or watching on the replay, leave me a comment. Say hi down there. Let me know that you're here. Well, I'll look at you. There's a bunch of you already here. Good morning to everybody. Look, I commented and said hi to myself this morning. (laughs) So That's either Eric or Vicky that did that. Not sure. Yeah, that was Eric that did that. So good morning, Eric. Good morning, Emily, Joe, Jeremy. Thank you all so much for being here. I have, I think, a pretty interesting topic for us this morning. Um, Another great quote from Seth Godin. I'll get to that in just a minute. If you're interested, I'll give you an update on what's going on with me at the end of the show. You can stick around um, and watch that. Uh, And Eric, while you're there, and you can leave a comment while I'm opining here uh, about the coffee shop show. I know you got my message that I won't be there. Tell me what to tell folks here. All right, so here's our quote for the day. You are not your resume. You are your work. That comes from Seth Godin. You are not your resume, you are your work. What does that mean? Well, I think he's been listening to the show because one of the things that I uh, encourage you with all the time, right, is that results are what have the greater, greatest impact on your ability to make progress. The ability to create results reigns supreme. I've had multiple businesses where on paper I was grossly unqualified for that business. And as Ramona, one of our frequent listeners, pointed out, uh, it was probably last week, maybe the week before, we were on a similar topic. And uh, she was talking about how it's funny that you can start and run, be the CEO of a business doing something, and then go try to get a job in the same field, you know, for whatever reason, and you're unqualified. Results are what matter. Now, results are very hard to document. Well, sometimes they're hard to document, especially in the form that the HR folks like. So when you're trying to fill out whatever it is, an application, complete your resume, uh, do an experience statement for, for a contract, you, you have to be able to quantify those results. Right? But if you can do that, and you do that consistently and repeatedly, those qual- those qualifications speak much louder than whatever uh, paper you have hanging on the wall. Now, here's the thing to remember, though. Results matter. Results only matter to somebody that cares. Right? So if I started, let's say, for example, I started a food service business, and I was trying to get a contract doing website development. There's a little bit of overlap there, but but this company, this entity who's going to let this contract really doesn't care. It, they, they, don't, they don't mesh, right? So you have to speak the language of the person you're talking to. This is just like marketing, where we talk all the time about you have to speak the pain language of your market. Right? Whatever they use to describe their pain, you have to reflect that back so that they know that you understand. It's the same when you are communicating your results. Right? You have to 
put those results in the context that the receiver can understand. This is a, a problem that's actually very common. <coughs> Whew, excuse me. It's a problem that's very common with veterans leaving the service. Right? And, you know, there's kind of a joke, you know, there's not many jobs, you know, shooting people on the outside, shooting at people. But there are plenty of jobs where your organizational experience, your decision making, your administrative skills, where all of those things can be highlighted. You just have to highlight the right skills and the right results. And when you do that, you get, uh, get the attention of the people that are interested. All right, a couple of comments here. Abby. Yes, yes, Abby. I have a chicken in my yard. I have this chicken, which um, I've decided we're going to put the naming contest off to next week because I had a rough start to this week. Uh, but this chicken sits up here with me all the time because the other chicken that now is over here somewhere is very unreliable in her program appearances. She just kind of comes and goes like she wants. So Joe actually picked that up for me uh, to be a more reliable uh, counterpart there on the show. Uh, all right, Eric says, and uh, well, we'll get to that in just a minute. 13 years in the Navy and I've never used a resume, says Joe. Um, yeah, that's true, right? If you, now, so, and here's a great example, kind of leveraging off of that, uh, that veteran example. I'm a veteran. Joe's a veteran. We speak a common language, right? So when he's communicating his experience and results, um, just by virtue of the roles that he had, I understand some of the results and experience he was able to create in order to achieve those roles so we can shortcut some of that communication because we speak the same language right that's the whole point of speaking the same language as your as your customer as the person to whom you are showing your results if you speak the language that they can understand you can shortcut a lot of that training it also just proves that you are really in tune with what they're looking for all right so here's the thing i want to leave you with uh, going back to the quote, you're not your resume, you are your work. Yeah, okay, sometimes you have to have the paper to get people to answer the door. And even if you're marketing, let's say it's not a resume, but it's a one sheet, right? Like I do a lot of public speaking, I still have to send one sheets around because people don't know me like they know, you know Tony Robbins or Brendan Burchard, right? They can just they can tweet them, hey, I'm interested, and that's all you need, right? I still have to send one sheets around. So, for a little while, I'll get over that. So, it's the same principle, right? I have to be able to demonstrate results so that those event organizers are interested in having me speak. Whatever it is in your line of business, whether it's a one sheet, uh, as you promote your business, if it's a resume, as you're looking for a job or to grow your professional skills, whatever it is. Be sure to demonstrate results. I personally even lead with results. The last time I did a resume, the, the whole first, well, I had my name and stuff at the very top, but then the, the rest of the top half of the first page was uh, maybe top two-thirds was all results that I had created in different roles. Uh, I mean, no, at, at the end of the day, nobody really cares about the, your chronological employment history. They care about the results that you're able to create, all right? Hey, Zach is here. Good morning, Zach. Thank you for being here. Thank you all for being here. So now I promised a little bit of an update. Oh, and I'll do it this way. Today's Wednesday. That normally means the coffee shop show at 9 o'clock. Uh, as Eric said in the comments, the coffee shop show will come off, as usual, at 9 o'clock, just without me. I've been, uh, as some of you know, at the beginning of the week, I had to take a day off. Wasn't feeling too well. And uh, so today I'm scheduled to go see the doctor again, have a few tests. So I will be, I've been up all night studying for him. It's just, it's exhausting. Anyway, um, I'll be doing that at the, at the time the coffee shop show is going. But be sure and join Eric. He will be there. The show will still broadcast here, the Unashamed Nonconformist, seven minutes in the morning. Eric's page, I think it goes into work that matters uh, in the group. 
So, and all those venues, on, I think it goes, shows up on Old Town Coffee, too, which reminds me, if you're in Huntsville and you'd like to come by and be a live cafe audience for Eric uh, and whomever he has joined him, be sure and do that. Uh, Old Town Coffee, just off of five points. I'll be back here again tomorrow, all testing completed. Another installment of seven minutes in the morning. I think that's it. Y'all have a, a wonderful Wednesday, and I'll talk to you in the morning.